fully in order as we rejoice in the Lord. We turn to the word of the Lord this morning. As you can tell by looking at the time, it's going to be a short word of the Lord, but we had that was part of it. We knew it would be this way, and next week we'll continue as well. The next week, as we've said, next week's celebration, it's more. It's more. More of the same. Um, so we do. We want you to not just look at, oh, it's just today that we're having our anniversary celebration. It's next week as well. As we celebrate 25 years of God's faithfulness to us, some of us have been here from the very beginning, just a few of us. Not so many anymore, right? Just a, just a few of you. Some of us came along at other times, a little bit later and a little bit later and a little bit later. And some of you have just become part of, a, of what God is doing here just within this year as well. But it takes every person. Yes. It takes every part in a building there is the digging. In a building, there is the foundation. Foundation has to be good, and we praise God for good foundations. But if all you have is a foundation, that's not enough, is it? There has to be more. There have to be walls. There have to be doors. There have to be windows. All of these things that are put together in a physical building. And the same is true in the building of God as well. It takes all of us. It takes all parts. And God brings us in because we are his building. We are his plan. We're his project. We are his work. And we are part of what God is doing. And it's a great thing. So that's what we're going to look at for just a short time this morning. We're going to turn to all the way back to the Old Testament. And we're we're going to be looking overall at something that took place 2,460 years ago, less one week. You see, some of Old Testament dates we know very exactly because we have surviving records in Persian calendars, and because the records were accurate, we can come all the way and compare it with modern calendars, and we can say, okay, this is exactly when this happened. So, less one week. What we're going to be talking about happened 2,460 years ago, but it speaks to us today as we celebrate 25 years of God's faithfulness. We're going to be talking about God restoring his people back to their homeland after they had been taken into idolatry. And this story, we'll talk about where it's found, and then we'll apply it to our, to our own lives and to ourselves this morning. Because of their idolatry and because Israel had broken their covenant relationship with a, with a faithful God, God in love, it's always in love, God in love had allowed his people to be taken into captivity so that their hearts would turn back to him again. That's why God was doing it. God did nothing out of hatred. God did nothing out of, I'm, I'm angry with you and you're bad, but in love because he wanted to restore his people to himself. So they were conquered by the Babylonians and they were taken off in exile to a country far from their home. They were taken to a country that was full of idolatry, but you know that really wasn't a big deal because God's people had already become idolatrous in their hearts. They'd already turned from God, and so God allowed them to receive what they had chosen, and they were taken away to Babylon, far from their home. They were taken to a pagan, idolatrous country, and they were there for 70 years. But God was still working, and God still had a plan, and God had a plan to bring his people back and to restore them. So let's look at the next slide. What was God doing? God's purpose was to restore his chosen people just as you and I are his chosen people by doing some, uh, by a whole list of things. He was going to bring them back from exile in Babylon, and then he was going to help them in the rebuilding of the temple, and then he was going to renew their covenant relationship with him, and then part of it as well, he was going to encourage them and stir them up to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He, all of this was part of what God was going to do. But all of this, the restoration of God in all of these areas, was going to take almost 100 years. We want God to move really quickly, don't we? Don't you? I do. I say, God, I pray, and God, do it now. God, do it now. But sometimes God moves a little bit more slowly than we would like. God still had a plan. And brothers and sisters, even when God is moving slowly, much more slowly than you and I would like, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a plan. It doesn't mean that God is trying to figure things out. God always knows what he's doing. 
in the church and in your life and in my life as well. God has a plan. And so he was working to do this. It took about 93 years, so almost 100 years. And the story of this is found in the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah. And you say four books this morning? No, not four books this morning. We're going to have the we're going to have the summary of it, but we're going to look at some things that will that will speak to our hearts this morning. This is God's message for us as we celebrate 25 years of faithfulness. It's just as clear to me he gave he gave this message to me so clearly in the in the weeks up to this and confirmed it um, just in these last few days. And so we look at this and it fits our theme of finding, following and fulfilling, serving God's purpose in our time. And God brought various people. He brought Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah at just the right time to fulfill his purpose at just the right time. And not only that, nameless others, people that weren't perhaps leaders, but that were part of God's work in rebuilding the wall, in building the altar, just as he brings each one of us together. And so their story speaks to us. And so as we look this morning of how God restores his people, we're going to be talking about how we celebrate this anniversary and how we find, follow, and fulfill God's purpose in our time. So let's begin with some scriptures, and let's start with Ezra. And we look at Ezra 1, verses 1 and 2. By the way, you know that I always try to give you the whole word of God, but to to keep it short this morning because of our time, I've cut out parts of it, so you go back and read on your own at another time. But I want us to look at this first, and I want you to see something as we look at the scripture. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, look, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. Who stirred the heart of Cyrus? Cyrus was a pagan king. He stirred the heart of Cyrus. And then Cyrus wrote, the Lord, the God of heaven, has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem. Then look at verse 5. Then God stirred the hearts of the priests and the Levites and the leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin to go to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple of the Lord. What do we see here in this first verse? What do we see? Let's look at it. Go ahead and click. What do we see next in this verse? Uh, back up, please. Is there something up there? There's no something up there? Okay, I'll give it to you then since it's not up there. When you see this, there we go. Oh, okay. It's a miracle. Amen. <laughs> Our purpose, calling, and motivation originate with God. It originates with God. Brothers and sisters, when it is God's work and God's purpose, it always begins with Him. I didn't suddenly have an idea. You didn't suddenly get an idea one day and say, hey, this is good, why don't I do this for God? When it is a good work, when it is God's work, it comes from Him. You can ask any one of these missionaries who, who have gone back to the Philippines. I can tell you, not one of them sat here in Hong Kong and said, hey, I'm going to give up a steady, stable income and go back and start serving the Lord with no guarantee of any income and do something for which I will probably be criticized and my family will probably say, what are you doing with your life? And people will persecute me and oppose me and I won't even have a really good health insurance plan or a retirement plan. <laughs> Not one of them decided to, to do that on their own. Every one of them, every one of them, what came, the idea that came into their hearts, the idea that came into their minds, it came from God. It's God's plan. It's God's idea. It comes from Him. It's not, oh, I've just had a good idea. And brothers and sisters, in your life and my life, young people, I'm speaking to you this morning as well. God has purposes and plans for you. It comes from Him. And when it comes from Him, it's always something good. And God will always work in your life to make it happen and to work it out. Don't give up. Don't get tired. It comes from God. And what comes from God and what God puts in your heart and what God puts in your thoughts, he'll be there to work with you to make it happen. This is, this is how God works as we see it with the story of restoring his people in Ezra and Nehemiah and Haggai and Zechariah. So when we see it's God's work and God's purpose, it always begins with him. It's not with you and not with me. He knows what needs to be done. He knows when. He knows the right time. He knows who. He has the right people. And he knows how. He knows how. 
And so the people begin to work. And so God stirred their hearts, the priests and the Levites. They went back to Jerusalem. It was tough to go back to Jerusalem, even though it was their home. Their lives were established in Babylon. They had, many of them had become very wealthy in Babylon. They'd been there many, many years. And to leave that and to go back was not an easy thing. And when God has purposes and plans for our lives, and he puts these things in our, in our hearts and lives, it won't always be easy. It will sometimes be going into something that is unknown. It will sometimes be going into something that is difficult. It will be sometimes going into something that you think, this is bigger than I am. How can I do this? And by the way, I don't just mean going to another mission field. I mean all of us in the areas of our lives. It may be something he's calling us to do or be in school, and it will be bigger than we are. But when it is God's purpose, when it is God's plan, you can trust him. You can trust him. You never have to be afraid. You never have to think, I'm out here all on my own. Oh no, what am I going to do now? When God puts his purposes and his plans in your heart, and in your mind, he is there to work it out, to fulfill it, and you don't have to be afraid. And so they begin to work. They begin to work, and then, but as they began to work, they got bogged down and they got tired. Have you ever gotten bogged down and tired in the work of the Lord? You've been doing, and you just, it's just tiring. Now, all the missionaries just nodded their heads very vigorously, and all the rest of us are thinking, how can the missionaries feel that way? They're the missionaries. They're always excited. They're always full of enthusiasm. They're always full of zeal. Nope, that's not the way it is. Life is life, whether it's on the mission field or in Hong Kong or in your family. And God calls us to do things, and we get tired sometimes. Young people, you get tired sometimes. All of us, we're trying to do God's work, and we get bogged down. But because it's God's work, because it's God's plan, God is not going to let you stay bogged down. Look at what comes next. Look at, what, look at what happens next. Haggai 1.14. So the Lord, this is some time later now. So the Lord sparked the enthusiasm of Zerubbabel. What a name. Governor of Judah. And the enthusiasm of Jeshua, or Joshua is, another, uh, is, a, is a, a, another translation of that name. The high priest. And the enthusiasm of the whole remnant of God's people. They began rebuilding the house of their God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Lord, the Lord's eyes are upon you. He knows when you're down. He knows when you're tired. He knows when you feel like giving up. He knows when you feel like, Lord, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. But God will fulfill his purpose and his plans in your heart, in your life, and through you. You think back to those early days, many of you, when you first became a Christian, when God called you. Remember the excitement and the zeal? Oh, it was all for Jesus, all you wanted to do. And then we come along, time goes on, life happens, and we, get, we kind of lose our zeal sometimes times, don't we? We lose our excitement sometimes. Let the Lord spark enthusiasm in your heart again for his work and his plans in your life. God has not thrown aside his plans for you or for this church. He still has a plan and he's still working and he will spark enthusiasm in our hearts. By the way, brothers and sisters, this is not somebody saying, okay, I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be excited. This is not what this is because that doesn't last very long. When the Lord stirs our hearts again, it is something that makes us move. It's something that gets us going again in the direction of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's not just, it's not just something that I generate because when it is self-generated, when it's self-generated. It doesn't last very long. But when it comes from the Lord, it gets us moving in his direction, in his plans, and in his purposes. So years pass, and they start rebuilding, they bu rebuilding the temple, and then they <laughs> built the temple. But God's plan is not finished yet because the walls of the city aren't built yet. So what do we see next? We look at Nehemiah 2.12, and this is many years later, Ezra is back, and then Nehemiah is in Babylon with a very good job. Those of you who left good jobs to go back to the Philippines, Nehemiah had a very good job. He was working for the king. It was a good position, and God began to stir his heart, and then he returns to Jerusalem, and what does Nehemiah say? I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart 
for Jerusalem. Where did those plans come from? They were big plans. They came from God. They came from God. It wasn't man saying, I'm going to do something great. It wasn't a man saying, I'm going to do something that's going to be mighty and everybody's going to notice me. The plans came from God. And when they come from God and they are put into your heart, into my heart, what God wants to do, what God wants you to be, what God wants you to become, you can trust Him. They come from God. He will fulfill that in your life as you respond to Him and as you work with Him. And then we go a little bit further. What do we see in Nehemiah 7, 5? The work wasn't finished yet. They needed to put people in the city. In Nehemiah 7, 5, we read, So my God gave the idea. My God gave the idea. That's one of the reasons I love going back and looking at this, though. This story is so, so old. You see people who give the glory to God for His work and His plans. Sometimes in our Christian world today, wow, so many people saying so much, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Sometimes very, it seems so boastful, doesn't it? And I'm going to whatever. You don't see that when it's God's plan and when it's God's work and when it's God's purpose. When it's God's plan and work and purpose, God gets the credit. God gets the glory and it goes to him. And Nehemiah says, my God gave the idea. My God gave the idea. And so this is what we see, brothers and sisters, in the big things of your life, in the little things of your life, in all of these areas of God, God will show us His purposes. He will show us His plans. He will lead us into His work. It comes from Him. And when it comes from Him, you can have full confidence to go ahead and do it. I, I, as I stand here this morning, I think of some of the testimonies of some of you that have come to me or you've come to Pastor Renee and you have said to us privately and quietly, I think God is saying this to me. Well, sometimes you didn't even tell us that. We didn't find out about it till later, as with Mayette, Pastor Mayette, when she went back. God had already told her what he wanted her to do. She didn't tell anybody. She just went back. And I think of others of you, when Chris and Janice, when they began their business and they wanted to honor God with the way they did their business at a time when the Hong Kong economy was whoosh, crashed at the lowest it could be, but they felt it was from God. And so they stepped out in faith. And others of us as well. You can trust God with his plans and his purposes. You just make sure it comes from God. Make sure it's not your own idea. Say, oh, I'm going to do this. You make sure it comes from God. And when you know it's coming from God, then you can step out and step out and step out into what God has for you. So that's something we learn as we look at this. As we look at this. But that's not all. That's not all. What are some other things that this story speaks to us? So let's look at some other scriptures this morning. And let's look, let's look at this. Let's look, look at Nehemiah 2.18. And I have, I've highlighted. Look at, look at this one first. Um, he goes back to Jerusalem. And then he meets with them. And he, he's going to tell them the idea God has given him to rebuild the wall. That's what happens at this point. They've already rebuilt the temple. Some of the people have already returned. Not everybody has returned yet. So God's work is not finished yet. But what do we see here? Look at what Nehemiah says. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. And they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. Now, look at this next sentence. So they began the good work. I love that phrase. They began the good work. Brothers and sisters, listen carefully this morning. If it is God's work in you, if it is God's work through you, it is a good work. It's a good work. God does good things. He doesn't do bad things. And if God is working, it's something good. It's something good. God always does things that are good. He always does things that are good. We so often uh, refer to Romans 8, 28, that God, he's, he's working. He's working in us. And he's bringing something good. And sometimes we go through times in our life and we look at it and we're following the Lord as best we can. We're serving him as best we can. And we look at our lives or we look at the situation and we look at it and we say, well, honestly, Lord, this is not beautiful. This is not, this doesn't look very good, does it? Have you ever gone through things in your life and you look and you think this isn't good yet? 
this isn't good? Brothers and sisters, if it's not good yet and you are walking with God, you keep on walking with God. He hasn't worked it out yet. There's still a timing. You stay with him. He will make something good. And if it is God's work, it's good work. It's good work. It's good work. It's worth something. It's worth something. It's worth something, brothers and sisters. It's not of no account. It's not something little. It's not something that doesn't matter. I mean this, brothers and sisters, in your life, what God is doing in your life, it may be big things. It may be small things. It may be something God wants you to do. It may be something that God wants to do in you. He's working in you. He's working in me, making us like Jesus. Don't discount it. Don't treat it as unimportant. It is a good work. Because it's God's work. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, let's look at another passage. So if it's God's work, number one, it's good work. And then we go move forward to Nehemiah 6. Nehemiah, at this point, they have finished rebuilding the wall. And let's look what happens next. But you know, even though the wall has been rebuilt, there are still enemies around. And so they sent a message. The enemies sent a message. And Nehemiah has the wisdom of God. And he says, but I realized they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. I love verse 3. I love verse 3. I love verse 3. He says, I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Four times they sent the same message, and each time I gave the same reply. I love this. Let this be a refrain in your heart. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Brothers and sisters, if it is the work of God, number one, it's a good work. Number two, it's a great work. That's right. It's a great work. It's not unimportant. It's not small. It's not insignificant. If it is God's work, it is a great work. It's a great work. I think sometimes you and I, we get busy. We get distracted. We look at what God calls us to do. We look at what God is doing in us. And it seems so insignificant to us, doesn't it? It seems so small to us. It seems so unimportant to us. And sometimes we let slip and we let loose the work of God because we think it's not a big deal. It's small. It doesn't matter. Brothers and sisters, if it is God's work in your life or through your life, it is not a small work. It is a great work. It's a great work. It's a great work. You and I so often don't know the importance of what God is doing. We don't know the importance of what God is calling us to do. We don't always understand the significance and the importance of what God is working in our lives because God sees the whole picture. God knows the whole plan. God knows what he wants to do in you and through you. God knows what your life and how your life will impact your culture, your society, your family, all of these things, God sees the whole picture. And because he sees the whole picture, he knows what I'm doing. It's a great work. It's not a small work. Your testimony, brothers and sisters, what God is trying to do, to do in you, it is a great work of God. So when it is God's work, it is a good work, and it is a great work. Don't let the enemy don't let life, don't let friends, don't let busyness, don't let these things distract you or delay you or turn you aside from the work of God. I love Nehemiah's answer to the enemies who are saying, oh, come on, let's meet and let's talk. He says, I'm, in, I'm engaged in a great work here. I'm engaged in a great work. I can't stop the work to come talk to you. Don't let anything don't let anyone stop you from the great work of God in your life and through your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Paul echoes the same thing in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And he says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable or firm. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. It is never wasted or to no purpose. We sometimes feel what we do, it does it, 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 it's kind of wasted, right? Nobody notices. It doesn't really matter. Paul says, what you do for the Lord, 
is never useless. It's never useless. It's never wasted or to no purpose. It is a good work and a great work of God in your life, through your life, through this church. Whoever would have thought when Lighthouse began 25 years ago, oh, whew, little nothing of a church. In fact, I don't want to go into negative things, but you know, there were others even in the church community that kind of really looked down on Lighthouse. You know, it's just, a, they're, they're a poor church. They're, they don't have much. They don't, oh, look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. As we have said yes to God, as we have said, God, I'll do what you call me to do. God, I'll be what you want me to be. God, I'll go where you tell me to go. And we have been involved in God's good and great work. Amen. 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 Now we're we still got a little more time. Let's keep going. What else do we see? Look at Ezra 4.4. 4. This is part of the story, but we're going to back up a little bit. And what do we see in Ezra 4.4 4 and then in Nehemiah 6.9? Brothers and sisters, then the local residents tried to discourage and frighten the people of Judah to do what? To keep them from their work for 35 years. And in Nehemiah, they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and what? stop the work. That's what opposition always tries to do. It tries to, to stop the work, to stop God's work in you, to stop you working for God. That's what opposition is always trying to do. So what does Nehemiah do? So I continued the work with even greater determination. That's, what, that's how we should be as well. What do we see in this part of the story? What do we see in this part of the story? Opposition always comes against God's purposes. Opposition always comes. It does not matter if it seems small or large, the work that you're involved in, when it is God's work. If it is God's work, if it is worth doing, if it is something of value, if it's going to be something for the kingdom of God, if you're going to do something for the kingdom of God, the enemy will come against you. There will be opposition. The enemy will always oppose any good work of God. The enemy will always oppose. You know when God begins to stir your heart and he wants to, he's reviving you and restoring you and calling you again to his work? How quickly and how soon does something come right along behind it? to discourage you, to distract you, and to make you think of something else, and so that you get off track again. The enemy will always oppose the work of God, always. In fact, as I was reading through just in Ezra and Nehemiah, I didn't look so much in Haggai and Zechariah this week, I was looking mostly at Ezra and Nehemiah, do you know that there are more than 25 specific mentions of opposition? Specific mentions, specific details of opposition against the work of God. Just in that short part, just in that short part, brothers and sisters, the work of God will always be opposed by the enemy because it's a good work. It's a great work. It's going to do something for God. And so what happens? We say, as Nehemiah said, so I continued the work with even greater determination. The same thing when God begins to work in our hearts and our lives. And then, you start, and then we start to get a little discouraged. You grab yourself and you tell yourself, God, I'm going to, you do this work in my heart and in my life. God, I'm going to keep going with you. God, I'm going to keep following you. Now, I want us to look at one other passage, and what do we see here? Sometimes the enemy is on the outside, but brothers and sisters, sometimes it comes from inside, doesn't it? Sometimes it comes from inside. Then the people of Judah began to complain. What? The people of Judah are God's people. The people of Judah are those that have been called to do the work of God. The people of Judah are those that are part of the plan and the purpose of God. They began to complain. The workers are getting tired, and there's so much rubble to be moved. This was in the rebuilding of the wall. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. And then the enemies are on the side going, wah, 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 as well. We're going to kill them as well. I mean, forget it. You've got the enemies out here, but sometimes, brothers and sisters, what's going on in our own hearts and our own lives and what we see see in our situation and what we see in our surroundings, that's even harder, isn't it? We get discouraged. And, when, and they say, what do they say? We're getting tired. There's so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. 
Guess what, brothers and sisters? They're telling the truth right here. Did you know that? You say, well, Pastor Jennifer, that's awfully negative. They're telling the truth right here. They say, we're tired. They are tired, and the work is, is still not finished. There's so much rubble to be moved. There is so much rubble to be moved. And then they say, we will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Guess what, brothers and sisters? They won't be able to build the wall by themselves. They won't. They're speaking the truth. Sometimes when you get discouraged and you look and you say, oh God, I can't. You're discouraged. You're speaking negative words, but you're speaking the truth. You can't. Here is the last part we're going to look at this morning from this story. And there's so much more as we look at this verse. They're speaking the truth here. Do you know why? When God calls you and me into his purposes, when he begins to lead us in his ways, we begin to do his work. Listen. God has never intended for His work to be done with our resources and our strength. That's not how God plans it. That's not how God do, does it. If it were that way, God said, hey, now you go out and do it, and then it's all up to us to do it, then it's our work. It's not God's work. It's what we can do. It's not what God can do. And when it is God's good and great work and He calls us to do it, it will be beyond what we can do. It will be more than what you can do. It will be beyond your resources. It will be beyond what you are as a person. It will be, uh, be beyond the skills and the capabilities you have when God calls you to speak and to go and to do and to be. It's beyond you. It's beyond me. That's the truth. But God doesn't intend for you to do it on your own. He doesn't intend for me to do it with what I have and with, with who I am. This is where God steps in. This is where God steps in. And when they say we can't do it ourselves, they're speaking the truth. But look at what happens when the wall is finished. Look at what happens. So on the 25th of Elul, the wall was finished just 52 days after we had begun, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. Look at the last sentence. What does it say? It says, they realized this work had been done with the help of our God. Amen. Here's the truth, brothers and sisters. The work of, of God will be done with the help of our God. With the help of our God, the work of God in your life, making you like Jesus, changing you from that old way you were into the new person that God has for you to be, will not be done by your own self-determination. It will be done by the work of God in you. And then those around you will realize this work has been done with the help of your God. Whatever God does, it will be done with his resources. It will be done with his help. Do you remember what Dad said at the video we looked at last week? And those of you who say, what video, what video? We encourage you, go back and look at the Lighthouse Facebook page. We posted it again. It's the, the story of Lighthouse, how, how it can begin. Remember what Dad said? Dad says, Dad says, we do what we can do, and that's all we can do. And then God does what only He can do. And that's when the miracle happens. That's when the miracle happens. If it is God's work, it's a good and great work. If it is God's work, it's going to take God's help. If it is God's work, there's going to be a miracle in it because it's beyond what you and I can do. Amen. 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 And so we close with 1 Corinthians 15, 58 again. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is our encouragement to you as pastors this morning. Be strong and immovable, firm. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. It's never wasted or to no purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 This is the word of the Lord to us this morning. We take it into our hearts and our lives. Oh, there's so much more. There's so many wonderful things, but this is the word of the Lord for this morning. And I invite you, we're going to, you've been seated for a little while now. I invite you to stand. Let's pray about this word of the Lord. Shall we do that? Let's pray about this word.